Japan, the country that led the foundation for a wonderful journey that is still continued today. A journey that originates from the early 19th century. When civilians of a small village from the Niigata prefecture in Japan first named a fish Nishikigoi. Swimming jewels that fascinate many people around the world. A valid reason to have a closer look at this beautiful country with a very rich culture. The only place in the world where the most beautiful koi varieties originate from. Many, many years ago the journey of Nishikigoi began. Diving back 400 years in time, the fertile soil of the Niigata prefecture in Japan provided excellent conditions for rice. Near the Ojiya city and Yamakoshi village is where it all started. Rice farmers, seeking for extra sources of food, to survive the cold winter season and feed their families. They started breeding black colored carp named Magoi and kept them on their flooded rice fields during the summer. One day, which should be a remarkable moment, a natural mutation appeared. A carp had turned red. And by crossbreeding, selecting and perfection over the years, many different types of koi had been introduced. It began in Ojiya and Yamakoshi village, still home of many koi breeders today that have put their hard work and energy into the creation of beautiful new varieties. It was the place where for the first time a koi was called Nishikigoi around 200 years ago. As soon as these varieties were showcased and exhibited, the news started to spread out throughout Japan. The Nishikigoi became a symbol of love and friendship, to rapidly afterwards become an admired and beloved phenomenon globally. For many years, and what is still tradition today, competitions are held to compete for the highest possible title, the Grand Champion. A prize that stands for reputation, prestige and honor. A trophy that can only be won by one, the very, very best koi at the show. It is about perfection and it starts from the moment when the koi is very little. Already in the first few weeks in the life of a Nishikigoi, Breeders have to take important decisions. Decisions that will determine the future. It is called Sambatsu. A selection process after the koi are about 4 weeks old. In order to have little koi to select from, the most important step needs to take place first. It is 3 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
Hitachi Hirasawa. Today the owner of the Marudo Koi Farm. Preparing for something that will have a large influence on the future of the entire company in the next couple of years. Using some of his important Aoyagoi, the parent Koi, for breeding. Over the years, breeders in Niigata have developed complex techniques in order to breed more koi. They introduced artificial breeding. The future of the koi farm is now in his own hands. An important step, as this brings new methodologies to experiment and enhance bloodlines. Not only can breeders have more offspring, but also cross multiple males with a single female koi to as next step separate the mixtures into different tanks. And that way increases the likelihood of successful spawning. More chances to have good offspring to select from and potentially have more koi that could become valuable. Brushes are used to spread out the eggs on. When the eggs come in contact with water, they become sticky and will settle themselves on the brushes. It will now take about 4 to 5 days before the eggs are going to hatch, turning into small baby koi. Hiratoshi explains about 80 to 85% will successfully hatch which is at least double the percentage of what would have hatched if this were a natural spawning. A hard needed increase providing the breeder with better opportunities. About 7 days after spawning, it is time to release the baby koi into the pond. Each bag released contains about 10 to 25,000 baby koi that are ready to grow. <laughs> that will eventually make it to become true Nishikigoi. But there are lots of hurdles ahead. Not all of them will make it. Okay. Mix for temperature. Temperature? Oh, uh, yes, mix, yes. ah, yes. Four weeks after the eggs have hatched into little baby koi. The koi became about one and a half inch in length. And the colors have become nicely visible. The Marudo koi farm can now start to perform their first selection round, called the Senbetsu. An important step for the breeder to ensure only the koi that have potential to grow into a beautiful swimming jewel are passed. All koi will have to be cut out of the pond, using large drag nets gently from one to the other side of the mud pond, and netting every single koi out of the pond. The selection is a large effort for the breeder. Marudo Koi Farm has a team of over 10 persons that is daily working on the selection process of all their pots. Ah, 
The selection criteria they use are strict and will be dependent on the variety that is selected. There are a number of reasons why breeders have to select their koi. There is simply not enough space to let our koi develop under the best circumstances. Only the koi that do have potential to grow into good Nishiki goi will be selected. The less koi a breeder brings into his mud ponds, the faster they will develop themselves. As some ponds start with over 100,000 baby koi from a single spawn, when a breeder would keep all of them, the pond would become overstocked when the fish grow. Resulting in problems, diseases and eventually resulting in death. It is normal for some varieties that only about 5 to 10% of all baby koi are passed through the first selection round. They will be kept to grow larger for about 2 to 4 weeks depending on the variety. To then perform a second Sambetsu, but usually a bit higher percentage will pass the criteria. This process will continue for some varieties to up to 6 times in the first year. It is one of the steps that leads to perfection and swimming jewels. The growing place of Nishikigoi is in muddy pools that are created on the sides of the mountains in the Niigata prefecture, where rice fields are also located. During the winters of Japan, a lot of snow can fall down. On a single day, it can occur that over a meter of snow falls down. And here lies some of the secrets of why the raising areas of Nishikigoi lay in the mountains. It had a mud pond. Early spring, the pools created on the sides of the mountain in the Niigata prefecture will start to fill themselves by the stream of melt water coming down the mountains. The melted snow water itself has some of the magic in it together with the mineral rich soil of the mountains which offer great circumstances for Nishikigoi to grow in, the water is very soft, almost without any hardness levels in it, offering extremely well conditions for growing out koi during spring, summer and a part of the autumn season. In these mud ponds the water temperature becomes well over 24 degrees in the summer offering the best conditions for grow to ingest food, grow larger and remain in a very healthy state. Koi can develop very very well in mud ponds since the circumstances are optimal compared to a usually overstocked artificial pond. As a result the growth rates are immense. Koi that are in their first year 
the Tosai can have double thin length at the end of the season. And that is where the next chapter of the journey begins. The harvesting season. The growing season is a journey for both the breeder and the Nishikigoi, and not one without risk. The entire year a lot of effort is put into these beautiful creatures. The selection process, keeping the koi healthy and growing the fry. The moment of truth is there. Have the rough stones been converted into diamonds? It is time for the so-called Ikeyake, catching and bringing home the koi. The baby koi that are born this year are now at least 4 inches. And tosai that have been released in the ponds at around 10 to 12 inches in length in spring will have grown to 15 to 25 inches in length under the most optimum conditions. The breeder will net and catch all of them out of the ponds to bring them indoors. A spectacular moment that draws the attention of many enthusiasts, including national television of Japan. So is it for the brothers Masahito Kataoka and Taro Kataoka. Harvesting some of their two-year-old Nishikigoi, the variety Sanka. These koi have been in the ponds for their second year, now being Nisai. For two years in a row they have put their effort into these creatures. An exciting moment for them. How have their koi developed? The koi are placed into small floating swimming pools, where after they are moved to the trucks. It is time to transport them to the greenhouses, where they will stay indoors during the winter. The winter season in Japan is too cold with temperatures below zero and a lot of snow to leave the koi outside. After some good inspections, breeders will identify the sex of each koi. For higher quality koi, the male and female koi are kept in separate tanks. As female can become more valuable for the breeder when selling their koi. The end of the season is also the period of the year where koi will show their finest and best qualities. After years and what is still tradition today is that competitions are held. Breeders and collectors from all around the world will come together. And the best koi in their class, size and variety compete against each other for the highest possible title. The Grand Champion. There are various types of koi shows, but the real and the highest quality koi shows are part of ZNA, the Zen Nippon Aringai. This is the original koi club that was established in 1962. 
The purpose of Saturday is to contribute to the enrichment of Japanese culture. They promote the way of good Nishikigoi keeping, directing the way of its appreciation and pursuing its beauty. Nowadays, these Zenane events are held all over the world. Every year, for example, a Zenane Koi show is held in Belgium, with world-class quality Koi with phenomenal patterns, body postures and luster on their skin. Gigantic high quality Nishikigoi is not something you will see daily. It is not that common that koi with exceptional quality will grow large, being able to keep the beautiful colors. There are a lot of aspects that have to be taken into account. At these shows, certified judges will pay attention to a lot of criteria. It starts with the body confirmation, the pattern, and appearance of the skin as well as the skin quality. The body conformation is about the shape and size of Nishikigoi. A strong and beautiful posture is when a koi looks like a torpedo with a strong tail section, giving it a robust but elegant look. You could say that how larger a koi becomes, the more important body posture is. Well, for smaller koi, the pattern and skin is more important than its posture. Hence, all koi in a show are classified into groups of size and variety. The quality of a koi mainly depends on their skin. You could say here that it is about contrast between colors. The higher the contrast between the colors is better. An example would be that white should be snow white and the markings have to be sharply and deeply colored. The winter is also an important season for the breeder. Not only is this the period of the year where the mountains of the Niigata area are covered with snow, but also the only period of the year where breeders can make money. And of course that is not with snow fighting. Over the last years, Koi have become so popular that from all around the world, koi dealers and enthusiasts will visit their farms. These koi dealers are in search for hidden gems. Nishiki koi that they will be able to sell overseas. Or even they have received requests from customers to search for specific varieties and bring these home. All koi houses are completely full with available stock of the breeder. The dealers have all possible choice now. I will give you an impression of how these koi houses look like.
The objectives of the koi dealers is to select sellable koi. After their choices have been made, the breeder will ensure all koi are shipped to their country. The koi will be packed in boxes and transported by truck to the airport, where they will take the first flight to their destination. Here the koi will be carefully unpacked. Usually they will be placed into a keratin period for about 4 to 6 weeks, for safety purposes. Thereafter the koi will be sold to customers to end their journey at their final destination, beautiful koi ponds. From here on the journey starts again from the beginning with breeding and the selection process. The journey of Nishikigoi that started over 400 years ago and is still a wonderful hobby today. Hopefully you have been inspired and enjoyed this documentary. Thank you for your attention and if you want to know more about Koi then make sure you follow our channel.